in the real estate world like your world is so different there is no space like real estate <laughs> it's so competitive like it's so competitive everybody's giving their thoughts to sell their agencies that's an example if a broker is talking about their opinions of nar their only allegiance is to the people that is a part of their brokerage yeah. whether they believe that or not i'm just saying what it sounds like on the outside looking in mm -hmm. from so my perspective on the outside looking in i just i really wish that the brokers and the people who are the leaders in the real <laughs> estate space especially for michigan because we all know who they are I just really wish they embrace who they say they are and really do it for everybody. For the culture. For the culture of real estate <laughs> and not just necessarily to grow their brand. Yeah, I, I agree. agree. I agree. Yeah. We can end it with that. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Real Estate Bone Real Estate Podcast, where we talk about the real shit and not about real estate. I'm one of your hosts, Brooke Jones, aka the Millennial Agent. What's up, guys? It's your girl, Tyra Nicole. And I am Nicole Pay. And today, we don't have a special guest, but we kind of do, because Rob Courtney is sitting in with us. We're going to talk about some pretty fun stuff. We're going to dive into the NAR settlement. We're going to talk about that. And really, like, we want everyone to get involved. Like, we're, where are we streaming live? Like, how we are places? streaming live on YouTube, Facebook. Uh, YouTube is rprpodcast.com, and then go to the YouTube link. And then Facebook, we're streaming on my Facebook page, which I'm going to share to the RPR podcast page. And the, sh the link, if you want to join the conversation, guys, if you want to be a part of the screen, you just need to click the link in the comments. And we Join do have us. Will Pay over here too, in the sidelines. And He's, Will right here. Oh, and Will's right. over there. We'll get him. Oh, you're right there. Look at you in the camera. <laughs> All right. Don't yeah. you feel And I'm drinking tea today. tonight because I we have, have a, a cough. horrible cough. Was it, is yeah. it from your knee? Like you said yesterday, it was from your knees? My knees. Oh, mm. them babies give it to you every time. I think everybody's been sick recently. And it Our just kids started to coughing me. too. Because what happened was we had 70 degree weather. Oh, and then yeah. guess what? We're down to the Third. 30s again. And that's what is happening. Like all of our kids are coughing and draining. And yeah. it's going, thank God we'll be. It's not fun. In the 80 degree but weather. You know what's great? Huh? What? Colds aren't real. I tried uh, telling myself. Another, did you know moment? <laughs> I tried telling myself. You didn't do it, that, but did you? You didn't know it. No, it's the, really you not know? real. So how do it's I get rid of my toddy? Automatically a hot toddy. Heal we told you, you have to have a hot toddy. <laughs> I tried to tell myself, I was like, if I don't think I'm going to be sick, I'm not going to be sick. And then next thing you know, Just keep I'm telling sick. yourself that over and over. Over and over again. So I have, a Sunday, right. I have a Sunday poll prepared. <laughs> a Sunday? I don't know if you guys it's know not this. Sunday, I've been though. doing Sunday You've been doing polls. Sunday polls. You yeah, have I'm going to still do Sunday poll, but... Are we doing it on a Wednesday? I'm, yeah, because I don't. it doesn't matter. Okay. My poll for one Sunday is going to be, does going out in the cold make you sick? No. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I don't know that you like a cold? No. Okay, so growing kind of up, sick? our parents would be like, Cover your you chest. better bundle up. It's cold yeah. out there. You're going to get, get sick. <laughs> That's so not true. Or don't take a shower. And or don't take a shower. Yeah. Or yeah. No. So, so what you guys are trying to say is that no. was false? It's totally yes. our parents lied to us. It has nothing to do with any of that. You have to get an actual virus in order to get sick. Going yeah. outside in the cold has absolutely nothing to do with making you sick. I feel like there's a lot of people out there that would disagree. But that's why I mean, can, when you go to this, <laughs> haven't you took your kids to the doctor before and they just have a cold and they don't do nothing? And to say it just has to it's run a viral its and how many times do you yeah. hear it's a viral infection there's absolutely nothing you, the only way you can ultimately like now granted we have sinuses and we have we live in Michigan so everybody has some type of sinus issue and when you start draining that drainage can ultimately turn into something else into Your an body's infection just naturally healing itself. but going out like ask what well how often do I wear a coat like Never. Okay, I, I never wear coats. Like, even when we walked in downstairs, like, the gentleman that lets us in was like, uh, you're Where's dressed a coat? little... <laughs> it's a vest. I yes, wear, and I he's thinking the same thing. And he said, you're dressed a little unprepared for What's the weather. What's on the mind? Yeah, it is the mind. I don't wear it's coats. Your Very mind. rarely will you ever see me in anything other, in a, other than a vest. And if I don't have a vest on, um, I have nothing on. That tells you how <laughs> powerful our minds are. Yeah. Because is anyone we, chiming in? I'd like to. We know. grew up 
No, we got being told, told that, and then that's what you believe, and then that's what happens. So is this gonna ruin your Sunday poll, though? No, we're absolutely talking about not. It now. I'm, I'm waiting to do the poll I so I can love. come back and we can see how there's a lot of people disagreeing with this. I would love for somebody to disagree that you <laughs> can walk sure outside and will. catch a cold. That's like it's no. Again, they're gonna say like, oh, you have drainage, whatever. But unless you have <clears> some type of viral infection from someone else or you have drainage that turns into an infection you cannot walk outside in the cold to catch a cold so you're saying that the cold weather can't affect your um nervous system that will then well, then why do people do cold plunges because it's good for you i'm just well that's I'm, all I'm a part of it question. being in your mind right like because it affects Wait, your nervous system. I was watching a podcast the other day, and they were saying cold plunges aren't good for everybody. Mm. They're only good for some They're people. not good for everybody because so they can shock be? you, oh. and your organs can, like, shut down. If your body is hot, mm -hmm. and you walk out into the cold, something, physi whatever that word is, physi physiology. Physiologically, or physiologically, happens. something happens, and if something she happens, says psychologically. something <laughs> happens to your nervous system, <laughs> it could create, it could create some type of reaction. Now, whether that's, whether that's sickness, whether now, that's, that is true. Yeah. And and that like I'm not disputing. <laughs> that's all in your mind at the same time. Right. Still but like your mind. the whole thing that our parents told us about. But listen, we have an 18 year old, and he probably wears shorts 97 percent of the time during the winter. Yeah. To school. I'm like, where's the rest what? of your? Yes. Dominic and, wears and he shorts. Takes a shower in the and morning. he takes a shower in the morning. And he leaves with a wet head. T shirt. I mean, he, he and probably. Slides. And a, I don't know <laughs> if the slides. kid even wears a coat to school. Like I, he might even be watching because he knows we're doing a podcast right now. So. Dom, if you're watching, like, do you wear a coat? I don't. I don't think I does. Say, does anybody out there have any thoughts on this on this topic? Because what about when the fan is blowing cold air at night, and you wake up with your sore throat or your nose running? That's because it's dry. Oh, That's oh, I sleep. I, I sleep with the window what? Up, open what? every morning or every night. Most of the chemtrails. <laughs> 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 oh goodness! That causes and everything. The and the particles in the air creep up on us at mm. night when the temperature drops. So I do agree. The temperature has to drop, and it does put your immune system at risk. Could it also be too, like if you don't get your air ducts cleaned, yeah. and yeah. you are um, blowing A your sore heat? Throat? Absolutely. Think about that. The if your air ducts house. aren't clean, you have du you have dust in your air ducts. Mm -hmm. And if your heat is blowing and your fan is going, you're literally Certainly. taking all that dust and throwing it around your room. And how many people either sleep sometimes with their mouth Not open open or it's dry or hmm. whatever, and you're inhaling all of that stuff. Mm. It, it's true though. Like, or, or it's a nighttime spider. Or they say oh, he we always eat, says we that. Eat he always says to me like, because I say we eat a ton of spiders <laughs> at night. Because right? I sleep with the window that's open. Not He's true. like, do you know spiders no, in that's my really, room? <laughs> no, they said that that's true. We don't know. Like invisible spiders. No, like, like yeah. Willis said so many times. It crawls in your um, mouth and stuff. I know. Stuff. I've seen okay, that, but I, I don't have any spiders in my in my house to like eat them. Just wait. I think everybody do, but just wait. They're gonna come. They're coming. I promise. Um, I can promise. Right. Okay, so we're so we, went we off always. On a tent. I know. So yeah. we, we we'll talk about. I'd like to know though when you do your Sunday poll because I definitely want to chime in on that because I will I will go rounds with that. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, please I'll, tag me I'll because I I think guys. that our parents have lied to us about a lot of oh, stuff. Oh, definitely. And it's all coming it's out. All in but our, it's all in our heads. It's all like, in our heads. Yeah. Um, we live in our own reality. <laughs> We do. We start, so we start our podcast with hot topics, and um, can we see? Excuse me. Can oh, we see comments like, like if right someone? Yeah, I can see. Them. Uh, <laughs> um, so there's a lot of shit going on right now. Um, first, the NAR thing took over, and mm -hmm. as real estate agents, we were all sucked into that. Um, but let's talk about Nickelodeon for a minute. Oh Lord. Um, I can't say what I gotta say on Facebook. So why? Cause Cause did you guys just, see that Drake Bell did yeah. a censored? I don't know what it's called, but it he was... He did an interview or something. Didn't he do an interview? Yeah, it's like interviews. Um, I don't know if it's on YouTube or whatever. I've seen videos, videos on TikTok. Of it. Yeah, and he yeah. was basically saying how Brian Peck, Peck is was... Name? Yeah, like... Is this allegedly? Use code words. Allegedly. Remember, allegedly, and we can't use code words. We have to use code words because on YouTube we could get flagged for stuff. So, allegedly, um, there was some um, 
what do we call it, SA yeah. happening. And um, people are coming out and talking about it more. And then there's other people who said that their show got canceled um, because I think it was like Just Jordan or whatever said the mm. show got canceled because he wouldn't participate in SA with producers or people mm. within. You, you um, can say that he wouldn't give up his backside. Oh. Well, <laughs> you can say that. <laughs> Who gave him a mic? You think like I'm going to say that? Do Do you remember when we did that look and I did the whole like look? Oh my! I hope hope my facial expressions when my husband just said that is happening because there's absolutely no way that I would ever. He wouldn't. Go ahead, Will. What would he do? (laughs) That is funny. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Supposedly from the occult. Allegedly, yes. uh, Allegedly. This is the initiation to your platform. Okay. But what wouldn't he do? <laughs> <laughs> I'd love for you to say it again. Please, for all the audience to see. He wanted to stay a man. Oh, okay. wait, what happened? Uh oh. Where did he Rob's go? out. Oh, Rob's out. See, right. Will? He turned it to you. You said what you said, and YouTube shut him down. And said enough is enough. Yeah, um, but, um, and got, then they were yeah. showing clips of so like Amanda Bynes and. I don't think so. Um, yeah, oh, back. people! Well, what is that show? What Victorious? It, no, 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 no. The um, is it a Netflix special or what is it called? Uh, not set it up. No, set it off as a movie. It's called, it's, um, what is it called? Uh, Quiet on the set. Yeah, it's called Quiet on the set. Yeah, this is a Nickelodeon and, situation. And, right, and and it, but I don't know what is it streaming on? Is it on Netflix or something? And people yeah, are, is it no, Prime or Netflix? Oh, no, it's, it's on. Uh, Max, you have to purchase Max. Oh, you do? Oh, I thought it was. Uh, oh, I thought yeah, I thought it was something. But this is like where everyone's coming out, and people are really saying that like Amanda Bynes and the people that were around her and her family like completely failed this girl, yeah. and the they, stuff that they put her through. This is like all of Hollywood. Yeah. Though. It is. It, I mean, it is. But I, I anybody think that mainstream, have, any mainstream TV networks, any mainstream television shows, media outlets. Sorry, guys. Like all of that Welcome stuff back. is Thank involved. You. Yeah, and so, um, but again, it's kids. It's like I involved. asked you before, though, and, and that's the unfortunate part yeah. is there kids, but I'm sure there's a lot more kids involved that we know. Um, but again, I've said this so many times, you guys. Like, what is going to happen because of this? Are we really going to see? Like, is there going to be anything that's going to come out, or is this distractions like the Kate Middleton disappearance okay. and everyone saying she's dead and this, that, and the other, allegedly um, that she's unalived? But um, mm. did you guys hear about that? I um, heard about oh, that. Oh, people are saying that Kate Middleton is unalived. Yeah, no, yeah. They say that's not really her. That's not really that's her, not and that um, her husband was having an affair, and he had an affair with <laughs> a friend of the family, and she's pregnant. Hmm? And so sorry. That's um, okay. The audience can't hear anything. Mm-hmm. That's not good. It says like Mike good. is muted. It does say Mike is muted. Yeah, yeah, on yeah, yeah. Oh, my unmute, mic was mute. Because oh. if you unmute, then that happens. Well, oh, that works. commercial. Break. Oh, yeah. We'll be back right after this commercial break. Yeah. And is there any other hot topics that we need? Um, there sure is. I will what? say our hot topic is that we partnered with Real Producers Magazine. It was yes. finally launched this we week. We did. It finally came out. The secret is out. We have uh, partnered with Real Producers. Go ahead and yeah. take the mic. Yeah, so we are now officially in a partnership. It will technically launch April 1st. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you're watching this, you are getting the exclusive uh, and the goal is to expose RPR to as many real estate agents as possible because this is the safest space to share your story. Absolutely. So if you have a story that you don't get an opportunity to talk about, you need to come have a seat in this chair that I'm sitting in right now so that you can tell the world. And we will help you tell your story. Oh, so if you feel yeah. like you have difficulties, Share your story. We will help you get it out. So, because we ask the hard questions, we yeah. get we yeah. get deep with it. So that's why I said yeah. you are a guest. You're not like us. Yeah. You're our special guest. But I'm you're a guest. I'm I'm feeling the feeling? void. I'm sorry. Brooke would have been alone if I didn't sit in. You're, so you're, somebody you're, had someone to, had to yeah. sit in that seat. Yeah. So I just why not be me? Like why yeah. Not? Okay. So every every second Wednesday, second Wednesday 
we're going to be interviewing some partners with Real Producer. We're going to be doing some interviews with them, and you guys will get to hear their stories. I love this podcast because I feel like I learned something new about Mm -hmm. every agent that I would have never never yeah. guessed and you guys have some amazing incredible stories and just being able to have like one-on-one time with the mm. agents is like really special so i value the time that we get with you guys and i can't wait to interview more people i'm so excited when when jimmy nelson and johnny awesome asked us like what was the best podcast and i think that each one of us had different answers but we've taken away something from different but i i, I think i don't know if it was you or brooke who said like the chance to sit and have a real conversation with somebody and learn something that you didn't know mm-hmm. every single time we leave here, it's fulfilled. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. So I'm super excited about what this is, is uh, going to hold and what's coming forward with this. Uh, there's going to be lots of good stuff happening. Yeah, and lots of mm-hmm. uh, live podcasts this year, too, oh, coming yeah. to events. And we're still looking to book more live events. So if you guys have an event and you want mm-hmm. to kind of get your audience interacted, um, yeah, just you know, reach out, and we'd love to interview them and do oh. some. On, well, some they have interviews. something to say, everybody. Turn the camera to him. Um, yeah, <laughs> listen, tune in, reach out to us. Go this ahead. Is the best space to share your rev- stuff. Rev- rev- hey, look at he's rubbing his hands together. Do you so see I, that? I got a. I, I want to call out somebody's missing. Um, this may be a new segment. You know, if everybody's cool with it, but we we're looking for Cam Sutton. So if anybody oh, knows where he oh is. Oh my gosh, Cam Sutton. They're we not hope, okay. Do you we know? We hope that he's okay. You don't know. <laughs> I don't know about no. this. <laughs> Who's that? Lord Cam have, okay, so William and I, being the football fans that we uh-huh. are, you guys know Cam Sutton is our cornerback for the Lions. Corner. 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 I said corner. I said cornerback. Okay. That's what, didn't I say cornerback? I thought you said cornerback. I thought you said corner. cornerback. Too, oh, I'm sorry. Like cornerback. I said cornerback for the Lions. And on March 7th, he was involved in a uh, DV with the woman that he was dating and he is now being charged with um i don't know what i'm allowed to say on youtube uh allegedly Allegedly. aggravated assault by strangulation Hmm. um and cam sutton has been missing for two weeks and nobody can find him. that name sounds familiar he he plays for the lions like he's what he's who's that cam sutton oh cam Sutton. that's his name that's his name cameron sutton okay and so what happened was um like like i said william and i are huge Sport. Like, we both have Bleacher Report, like, Fox News. And all of a sudden, both of our phones start going like that, dun 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 Like, and then Bleacher Report comes through. And basically what has happened was, it happened in uh, Mi- Miami, right? Miami, Florida? Florida. In Florida. Florida. I don't know if it was Miami. Something's always Hills- happening in Florida. Hillsboro- Hillsboro. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> okay, anyways, it happened in Florida. And um, they have been looking for him for two weeks. How old what? is he? 29 oh, years old. They have a worn out player. A worn out player? A worn out football player? player? Yes. Yeah. But, he but, has gone missing. But for questioning. For so questioning. He hasn't been charged. But, but they said there's enough evidence there's to. Enough. Yes. He has a warrant out for his arrest. Wow. Um, and it's like major headlines right now. Like um, mm-hmm. Detroit was sitting on such a high. We're coming into the draft weekend coming up um, April. Wow. Sign some new players out of free agency. Free agency. So this is a Lions current. player. He's, he's a current Lions player. He had a three-year yeah. contract with us. He's fulfilled one year, th- a three-year, thirty-three million contract. He's fulfilled only one, and um, like missing. his phone is turned off. No one can find him. He's been missing. So they've been looking for him since March. Hopefully 7th. he's alive. I. I just did I not say that? It just sounds something doesn't so make sense. Someone something missing doesn't for two weeks is not good. No, no, absolutely. Especially with all the social media, like with Correct. all the ways they can track you now, Correct. and exactly. everyone and, usually has. And their William phone and I were talking about it. Like we're in we're in the signing period right now, so free agents are being signed. Like like I said, the draft is in uh, April what twenty fifth. 25th, 26th, and 27th of, of April. Um, mm-hmm. So, and it's in Detroit. Like, Detroit has been sitting incredibly pretty with everything that we've been doing. Um, and for this to happen, number one, is crazy. But number two, Will brought up a good point. When you're signing, like, you got, you guys, when something happens, you two are being the sports people that you are, you don't shoot a text to each other like, hey, did you see that signing? Or hey, did you see who so-and-so grabbed? Mm-hmm. You mean to tell me that nobody has reached out to this guy in two weeks yeah. to yeah, just now right. figure out that he's missing? And, and uh, uh, we'll say this and we'll move on, but 
Detroit, yeah. Detroit, yeah. Sorry, Detroit. I'm Lions. sorry. I'm like no, no, about okay. this. Like this has been consumed our day. We've been the, listening uh, to podcasts all day about Detroit this. Detroit Lions just issued a statement today and said they just found. They out just found out about it this they morning. Didn't know, they, they didn't know about it until today. Yeah, I don't believe that. <laughs> yeah. When did she like file the March charges 7th. or March 7th, what? On March seventh at like four o'clock in and the morning. And that's how long he's been missing. He's been missing for two straight weeks. Yeah. And the Lions are saying, and we are like like Will's wearing Lions right now. Like we are diehard Lions fans. Um, and the fact that the Lions are even saying they just found out about this this morning is yeah. not true. Like it can't be true. But the fact that this man is missing, his phone is off, nobody knows where he's at. We so, must not have a lot of Lions fans because people are. No one's saying anything about this. Like out. this they're, is they're, like. Oh wait, they're going to hear about real estate. They're, right. they're, leaving, right. they're leaving. Okay, the we're done. Brooks. I'm sorry. Like I was Brooks. intense about this. Brooks, segue. So, go, go segue because in other I did, news, I did Brooks' job. I can, yeah, I can talk about this forever. In other news, we all know that the NAR lawsuit has been blowing up. Yes. Not only um, real estate agents. Social medias, please get that away from me. <laughs> uh, but also in the news, was yes. it on what was CNN? It? CNN, yes. Um, funny, I, I went to my parents' house the the other day, and it was the first thing they brought up to me. Like, what's going on with you know real estate and mm -hmm. the lawsuit? And so the general public is hearing it, and it's spreading like wildfire. And so yeah. let's talk about it. And I don't like what the general public is putting out. And my thing is, my thing is anytime that the general public or it hits the news and it's like a big story, is some type of agenda yeah. or something behind it. Yeah. So that was my problem with it. Like when I first heard the news, it was never like a panic for me or oh my god my business is going to be affected it was more of like a passion that i have for like these scandals or these agendas that's put out or whatever so well, let's be real like we have yeah. to now just start to buckle down as agents and it's going like we talked buyers about this agents. last night like buyers agents like you're gonna have to start doing stuff that you might not have done in the past there's no doubt about that. But we talked about it last night. What does this mean for seasoned agents? You've mm -hmm. been in the game for a while. You've been in it for a couple of years and I'm a new agent. So what does this mean for all of us? How does this look? Mm -hmm. And I know everyone's talking about like the new agents coming in, it's gonna be a big deal. But I also feel like if I learn now or if the new agents mm -hmm. coming in learn now how to do it in a different way, and step up the game when things have changed. 2008, the market crashed. Then we had um, short COVID. sales. COVID. COVID, yeah. We've that had to pivot as agents yeah. so many times. How is this any different? It's all a part of being in the business. Yeah. Like, I learned a long time ago, you have to change with the market. And so even if you are a new agent, it's just like a realization of the fact that this is something that you have to get used to if you're gonna be in the real estate business. Real estate, it's always changing. The market right. is always changing. You just have to change with it. Okay, now you have to do this. Okay, that's just what you have to do. Now you have to structure your business around what the new laws are. But I have a question for you guys. Go ahead. Do you think that sellers now are waiting until July to list their house because they think that they're going to make more money in July than they would right now? I didn't think about that, but they probably are. I mean, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> but They're, they're yeah. pushing everything back. Think about it. People are waiting for the interest rates to go down. Now they're waiting yeah. for this to pass. What, do, what are we waiting for? Those just for? aren't the serious buyers it's, that you want to exactly. work with. And, and that's what I was going to uh, talk about as well. It, in I mean, the bigger, sellers, sorry. In the bigger picture of things, um, it takes an agent to inform, a listing agent to inform somebody of basically what's happening. Yeah. You, we can listen to mainstream media. And it's mm -hmm. only and like the headlines suck. Like, let's be real. The headlines are absolutely awful. So in my opinion... <laughs> Do I think that it's going to change? No, because, I, okay, how can I word this? Because I was reading things that like people were thinking that the housing market was gonna go down because of this. Mm -hmm. And then other people are like, no, sellers are still gonna make money. It could. You think, I mean, that, you think the market will go down from this? It could have an effect on 
the seller side because it's like sellers are getting this thing now where okay I don't want to pay this because I, I don't have to pay for the buyer the mm -hmm. buyer is going to pay the buyer's agent now so now I don't have to pay 6% or 7% whatever your commission was I can now only pay 3% okay now you got three percent and now you got a seller that don't want to pay a buyer's agent so now it's no commission to the yeah. buyer's agent I can see what you're saying and an agent you can't list it well starting in July you yeah. can't list it on the MLS anymore but, didn't but you, you say, can reach out and call well, the agent. Well it's not passed fully yet right it still has to be it still has to be approved by it's, federal. It's a proposed settlement that they've agreed upon, but it mm -hmm. hasn't been signed. But didn't you say judge, you were so already starting to see finalized. it? Like you yeah, were already I saw starting. 1 we talked already. about this at one percent already. That things were changing at a one percent already. And we know how that works. Like even when you would see a listing and it only has two percent, you kind of shy away from that listing. Mm -hmm. Or if it's a lower commission, just be honest. Like you'll kind of shy away from that listing. Mm -hmm. So just imagine having zero percent. Sellers, if you do not want to pay a buyer's agent any money, they're not going to do their job for free. So they're going to take their client to a listing or a seller or listing agent that's going to pay them a commission, right? So then when your house is sitting on the market for a year because you refuse to pay the buyer or the buyer's agent, that's why it's sitting there because the buyer's agent's not going to do their job for free. Yeah. But and what listen, happens when the buyer's agent starts to get bypassed? Like the yeah, buyers are going to try and do themselves. The yeah, do we, there's going to be lawsuits because the buyers are going to try and sue the sellers because they're going to realize they got screwed over. Like these buyers don't know what's all involved in the process of buying a house. Correct. Yeah, they're not going lot. to know that they need to get a city inspection. They don't know that they need to do whatever so it is. So you think the ramifications might be bigger if buyers yeah. try to go without the agent? Yeah, they're going like, to get screwed over eventually. I mean, how many deals have we gone into that are like a shit show? Um, yeah. Most of them. She says most <laughs> of them. Well, no. Some of, not, I, not I have most a deal that went really <clears throat> smooth and we're supposed to close Friday and I had no problems. So there's a lot of them with no problems, but it's a lot of them with yeah. problems. Yeah. And buyer's agents play like a major part in that. Honestly, like with listing agents, the reason why people are listing agents because it's easy. You put it on the market and you <laughs> have a buyer's agent find a buyer for you. Yeah. And they bring a buyer to you and you get the deal. I, I have no skin in this game, <laughs> okay. but I will say. Any comments? I, I was about to say, I will say I've heard the rhetoric. And one of the things that I heard today was this is going to eliminate the people who aren't really built for real estate. Absolutely. Basically, because they've been able to kind of ride the wave. Mm -hmm. of it being easy and now you have to be more skilled and you, you have, have to, to show your value but you want to know it's funny value. though and, and the funny part about it though is people ride the wave on what's easy being a buyer's agent really isn't easy the seller or listing agent mm -hmm. is kind of the easier role when you come into I, I mean am I wrong it's definitely that? the it easier depends. role but I, sometimes I mean it's, I, I, Dealing had, with the seller that, sell, you, that yeah, makes say, it I've had not situations easy, that it but. wasn't. But in the, in the big picture, like uh, like a buyer's agent has to do a lot of work, and it takes a lot of hours. And we're out in the field, mm -hmm. where when you just list a house, like you said, you wait for the buyer to come offer in. to come in, and then you go from there. So my question to you guys is: is like I we have uh, our, this, our question to oh, everybody out there because you guys can join this conversation. Yeah, let's we can talk. bring you in. If you have thoughts or comments and want to be on the screen, there is a link. All you have to do is click the link. I will bring you in and you can share your thoughts. So go ahead, Nicole. Sorry. Oh, no, so I, was, I was waiting and the also, camera because we have all angles everywhere well, of us. Just, <laughs> also. Oh, there he is. Also. Uh, there's all of a sudden, after we stop talking about football, like, 
Everybody show up. Everybody. Listen. <laughs> they don't want to listen. <laughs> they said, take that to ESPN or Y'all sports. better get it together. <laughs> we are in the Motor City. I can talk about Are football. you not a Lions fan? Like, what I can talk doing? about football for hours. <laughs> don't get me started. Like, right, my bad. Do I not get me started on football. Make it up to that real quick. Because I, I really think we listened yeah. to every podcast today about this Cam Sutton situation. But, but if I'll but, back to the, the NAR settlement, it's, yeah. it's like... This happened with every market change. It you find out who's like the people that can mm-hmm. re- like the real agents because it was the same thing when the market crashed in 08 and, and then you, you had COVID. all these foreclosures and then what about when the foreclosures went away? A lot of people specialized in short, short sales, sales and REOs and then that went away and then a lot of brokerages actually shut down. Yeah. But if you so if you don't know how to change and shift with the market, like you just won't stay in this business. But so. and um kind of seeing it from a different point of view, not the agent, but the buyer in general. We talked mm-hmm. about this a little bit. First time home buyers are already having a really hard time yeah. purchasing a house. And now if they have to pay their buyer's agent, it's even more money that they have to dish out, which is making it okay. harder for first time home buyers and just buyers in general mm-hmm. to even buy. Which Yeah, my thoughts on that is that's when it comes down to being a really good negotiator for your buyer. Like if that's your client, you have to go to bat for that client. Yeah. So do what you need to do to try to get them some concessions or get them something that's going to help them to actually be able to purchase a house. And once again, that's going to separate the great agents the from, the from the mediocre men, ones. Like, yeah. So you know? really quick. This wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait before you say that, Kristen, okay. here's a comment. Okay. Kristen says, bottom line is the skilled professional agents are the ones that will win here. The doors, the door openers will not make it through this. Yeah, there are going to be agents that get screwed over. They're going to be at the closing table. But and I want to talk about paid. that for a minute. The skilled agents, but you have new agents coming in all the time. So I get it, the skilled agents who have their spheres and everything, but... but why are we deterring from people who want to start in this because business? Because they don't new want agents can be skilled. They don't want new agents I mean, to come I mean, in no, new agents can be skilled. But they, they have to be taught and trained. But, yeah. have to be, but there, there has to be some level of teaching and training and mentorship. Mm-hmm. So my question is, are we detouring to where... Granted, yes. like... The, uh, okay. <laughs> well, there well, you well, yeah, And I, I, I get, like, like, I get that, but I don't ever, like, I don't, teachers, let's talk about teachers. Like, t- there's teachers everywhere, and mm-hmm. teachers don't make a lot of money, and they go through some shit to be a teacher. Like, let's be real, especially after COVID and everything like that. But are we going to detour people from being yeah, teachers? Can I, can I, okay, again, guys, let me, let me change this. You want you want the mic? Yeah, or the Listen, camera on your face. I'm not, I don't have a license. <laughs> I play in the real estate world a lot, um, but I need you guys to think about this. Real estate, out of all the industries that I work in, you guys are the hardest on each other. <laughs> like real estate brokers, agents, well, we're et cetera. Not. This room is not. No, I'm, I'm talking to the people. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Like, you guys go hard on each other. Yeah. And it's almost like, I feel like there is the stigma of, mm-hmm. I've been doing it for 30 years. I've been doing this for 20 years. And I don't like to see the new agent who's only been doing this for two years come in and dominate. It's Because ego. they it's figure, ego. possibly, oh. Possibly, but out of all industries, there is no other industry that is as cutthroat as the experienced it's real estate the agent. The first deal like, I ever crazy. did, the uh, listing agent literally um, basically said to me, like, this is your first deal, isn't it? You can tell. And I was like, well, if you've been <laughs> in the game that long, like, I called my mentor, like, oh, my gosh, what do I do? Like, because I'm still learning. But... My idea is if you've been in the game this long and you're that much of an experienced realtor, oh, well, you guys, mm. re- realtor? Um, <laughs> realtor? Realtor. She, um, she was shit. She but was no, those are shit. good things to like, hear, though. You need to hear she stuff was, like that she, as a yes, new agent. And, and she was, but she, 
she was shitty. Like this was she was dead set mean to me. You need that, though. but there was no. But why? But to me, and maybe I'm different. Like you, I would you take see, a mentorship though. and be like, oh hey, like. This is your first deal. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do it like this, blah blah blah. Because at one point, everybody was a new agent. Mm -hmm. For this business, point, though, you need stuff like that. When I first got in this business, th the mentor that I had, he literally made me read forty-eight. What is it? The forty-eight, 48 laws, laws of power. power book. But we read that like every time we would meet. We I'm read not. A part I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying. This but is a cutthroat business. It is a cutthroat business, but that wasn't the way to do it. Like in in as. But a you like, learn from it though. I didn't learn shit except for she's a bitch. You probably don't That's realize probably it right learned. now. You don't realize it right now. But if you stick to this, maybe like five, ten years later or something, I would you never. Might go back. I disagree with you. I will never treat no, I, any I new agent like that because we'll. Like, I agree with Tyra. It's a make or break business. I understand so, that, but so, I would never so treat all a human of that being type like of that. stuff that you hear help you develop into the Correct. person that you become. It makes you. If everybody's all nice and kind, and I'm not saying be nice and kind, but it like. We, but look we, how it made you feel, though. It didn't give you no type of drive or anything. No, I, no, I was ready to walk away. Was that like? I mean, the reality is that everybody responds bad. to different types of mentorship, yeah. different types of coaching. It's That's like, no mentorship, you, though. That's just the real of what it is in this business. I was gonna say real quick. I think what Tyra is saying that when you're in a fight. Some people put their hands down and get beat. Some people just turn and walk and run away. Those type of scenarios, if you're made for this business, you put your hands up and you say, what you got? I'm coming back for more. As a matter of fact, you will never do this to me again. And, get, and, 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 and to be honest with you, you know what? I will agree with you because what exactly did I do in that moment? She was playing with me. She knew I was a new agent. And I put my foot in the sand and said, my clients are not going to do this. And guess what? Our offer was accepted and we moved forward. Mm -hmm. So I did put my foot in the sand, but I just... Do you remember now, that if someone says that to you again, what's going to be your reaction? I don't know if I can say that online. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying I'm sure it won't affect you the same way the first time. You, you're right. I, I will totally give you credit like on that. You're absolutely right. Um, but I get it being a cutthroat industry, but at the, at the end of the day, like we're all here to make money. And I money. had someone say, I, I can recall someone said something similar to me when I first got in the business, like an agent said that. Um, and then she just, not only that, she just kind of like went down the line of all the stuff that I did wrong as a new agent. And I think it may have affected me a similar way, mm -hmm. but then I had like a mentor that told me like, like the same thing I'm telling you, like you right. gotta hear stuff like that I don't in order disagree. to make it into this business because that's what it is. And if you hear it enough, at some point you're going to hear it and... It's not gonna affect you. So, I, I mean, I'm gonna flip it to to sports because that's what we do. <laughs> oh, don't talk about football. Yeah. We'll lose all I, our I, listeners. I'm, so. not, I'm not going to football. <laughs> don't route, go too but deep in, into in comparison <laughs> to in comparison to a coach and a team, your to me the most impactful moments are the moments where the coach called me out, made it very clear and apparent what it is that I did wrong and made me emotionally feel something. And that's what I think like and sometimes like they're not they're not pulling on the right strings but for you mm -hmm. as an individual. But at the end of the day I feel like the most success comes when they can tap in whether it's frustration, anger, excitement. It's an emotion. Exactly. Yeah. Like they need to stimulate some type of emotion that's make you going to never forget what you did wrong at that time. Because from now on, if that thing comes up, you're like you're not gonna make that mistake no more. You know, like whatever yeah. whatever the whatever that person calls out, you're never going to do that wrong if it that's makes fair. you feel that emotional about it and yeah. i think that's really what we're talking about that's it's like fair. let me so so how does this in, in retrospect of what you're saying um how does this nar settlement now change the game for new agents well good good segue because first of all kristen says to your point no not at all saying t not no not at all saying no new agents but to your point nicole they need to be educated and trained so who they align with will matter. That's, That's fair. All. That's and then, true. And then the next question, or 
Yeah, next question or comment from Taekwon Jackson is, will this new law make it harder for new agents? Uh, I don't think what necessarily. It, d it depends on who you are teamed up with, like what Kristen said. And it's all about think, the way you look at it, really. And I think, it, I think it's another pivot. If you think it's like, going to be hard, it's going to be hard. Exactly. <laughs> but but as, we, as you even said, it's going to be another pivot, another yeah. 2008, another... It's going to be um, a year of trying to figure out what we need to do to get back to normalcy. Look and at then, COVID, Do you think guys. it's going to be a year? Do you think well, it's going to be a year? Maybe not a year, but, you know, like... I think they're going to find some, like, literally, like, people are already <clears> talking <throat> online about... You know, writing in um, agent friend or buyer agent friendly the in the MLS is, or you could come up with words. like your own agreement. Like yeah. you do have to not part of the new mm -hmm. um, proposed settlement is you have to have some type of buyer agency agreement Correct. with the buyer signed before you can even start showing the house. Which Correct. is great. So this is great for me because I'm like. I like to like put together like my own like contract or whatever or yeah. word stuff in my own type of way like all that riding around that buyers do showing <laughs> houses and this and that. okay look like you're gonna yeah like this isn't free there's gonna be some accountability yeah, so. yeah I mean so and we have the actual settlements facts, right fact like we have sheet. from a directly from NAR NAR mm -hmm. and so um, here it says the settlement provides that MLS participants working with buyers must enter into written representation agreements with those buyers. Yeah, that's what Tyra said. Before you go mm -hmm. show houses, you have yeah. to have a buyer's agreement. And also, it says in here too, uh, there will continue be, to be in many ways in which a buyer broker can be compensated, including through offers of compensation communicated mm -hmm. off the MLS. Yeah. And I think that's one thing people are not talking about is mainstream media has put it mm -hmm. out there as we talked about they've they they've had it uh, um i don't want to say misinformation that's not it's what i'm saying of, it's misleading <sighs> misleading information yeah, definitely misleading. about how things are going to happen but it literally says here offers of compensation communicated off mls as as we have long believed that it, it is in the best interest of the sellers, buyers, and their brokers to make offers of compensation, but using the MLS to communicate those offers of compensation would no longer be an option. So we can put it in a PA. We can talk to an agent before that and say, is there a uh, seller's concession for a... It might get a little catty between the buyer's agent and the listing agent. And if you don't have a good listing agent and they're brand new and there's a buyer's agent that's very smart and witty and they put something in the buyer's or the purchase agreement the listing agent doesn't catch because they're brand new that's you true. could actually screw over your seller that is very true yeah you <clears throat> definitely have to start reading those purchase agreements people yep yeah. and it even says here the types of compensation available for buyers brokers blah 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 fixed fee commission paid directly by consumers concession from the seller portion of the listing broker's compensation, which is what we've already done. Mm -hmm. Like that's the 6% split. But do you think there's gonna be a lot of agents, um, listing agents out there that are actually still going to push for the 6% and then split it with the buyer's agent? I um, think so. I mean, I think, think so, but then you're also gonna have them agents, listing agents that, cause I've saw it out there with the comments. Like someone have, I saw a comment where someone was like, I met with a listing agent and they don't want to pay a buyer's agent commission and I'm fine with that. So, but it, okay, let me ask we you should this fight, now. We should fight for that as a, we should tell them what the value in paying a buyer's agent is. So we yeah. shouldn't just agree to that as listing agents. Mm -hmm. But I then feel. my next question is, would you detour from having your clients look at a house if there's no buyer's compensation, well, you're gonna write it in the addendum. But but what if they what if they don't agree? Like, my question is like, because yeah, you're saying. gonna have conversations before and then your we buyer's even gonna still want the house. Then that's my thing. So what happened? Like, you're gonna have conversations with the listing agent before the PA is even mm -hmm. submitted, right? Like, we're gonna that's talk what about we, this. Yeah. That's what the we're buyers for. That would be the, the smart. The buyers are so gonna pay the commission. Then. If the buyers don't want to pay the commission, the buyer's agent's not going to write the contract for you. Are you going to do a job for free? But yeah, technically, 
part of your how do you say it fiduci- fiduciary, fiduciary. fiduciary. I can never say that right duties that wouldn't be ethical to do that so this is an interesting but. concept so now let's hypothetically say we go into and Tyra's my client and I come to you and I say hey my client would like to put an offer in is there any um, seller's concessions or mm-hmm. buyer's agent uh, commission mm-hmm. you tell me no, no. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I go back to my client and say there's no that's one where, thing where, I wouldn't go back to this? my client and okay, tell so, my client that so, okay so where does this scenario happen because I think that's the thing is like we listen to all these podcasts that we you listened to in the last couple of days. You can't say that. But where do you go from there? And I, I think say that's where it is. That may be a difference from maybe like a seasoned agent and a newer agent or someone that's kind of just getting in the business. That's probably something I would never tell my client. I would go to like my negotiating brain okay. and figure out how I can still make this work somehow. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I would say, let's include this in, <clears throat> we'll still include it in the purchase agreement, but I yeah. would never tell the, the um, buyer that the they're buyer not that offering that. That's not, okay. We have a if, comment, oh, go ahead. If that house stays on the market, you can always say like, listing agent to take 2% and give 1% of their commission to the buyer's agent. <clears throat> but that's what I'm saying. Or like the but are we going to get into a situation that listing agents are actually going to do that? It depends on the listing agent. You have those stubborn listing agents. Yeah. That's, All right. Okay, what's the, what's the comment? Um, so I was trying to get a couple of people to join the conversation, so I didn't no hear everything that you guys. So this might be not actually accurate for what you're talking about now. But the comment is, just to comment, Lauren says, I see homeowners that are wanting to buy, being caught in the middle of some prolonged transactions, at least in the beginning, if parties cannot come to an agreement as quickly. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of that. It's gonna be a lot of buyers just not really even knowing what's going on and the listing agent and the buyer agent kind of going back and forth when it's not about you. That's the part that I don't like. That's it. It's not about the listing agent and the buyer's agent. It's about the buyer and the seller. That's what I'm saying. Now we're taking away from the actual buyer and seller. Now it's about the listing agent. It's causing division. I feel. It's gonna cause division. <laughs> it's about to be some fights. Our job is for the buyers, <laughs> and it's to help already our hard. Sellers. Like it's already hard trying to work with another agent mm-hmm. on a deal and try to make it happen, and now it's just causing more. So I guess yeah. I guess my question is, being that we are all different stages of our real estate world, Rob, you've been around for a while. Will you're working on your license, so we're all like somewhat tapped into real estate. Mm-hmm. How do we move forward as agents? What What is like, do we all pack together and say, listen, like we're gonna keep doing this as agents, we're gonna keep moving forward to make, I don't wanna say the world go around, but you know what I mean? Like what do we do as agents to change my, what's happening? My answer to that is what you do as an agent, continue to figure out ways that you're gonna provide value to your client. It's not about all of the stuff that's going on. It's about what you're going to do as an agent to provide value to your client. That's it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's really nothing else at the end of the day because if your client actually sees value in you, they're going to fight tooth and nail for you just like the same way that you right. do for them. And mm-hmm. those clients that don't, that means that they don't see value yeah. in you and they're going to just go straight to the listing agent or they're going to find another agent or they're going to I don't want to say this yeah. is like a conspiracy theory because <laughs> we're not going to go there but I feel like this is just another way to divide people like I feel like this is just another fork in the road that people are coming up with to yeah. literally divide everybody at some way or well, another I mean it's so I feel like anybody that's just get into the business, the only thing you're going to hear is, only thing you're going to see is the challenge in front of you, right? Because it's already hard. Like, it's already an uphill battle. So now we've taken something that's already hard and we're 
throwing another obstacle in the path mm -hmm. to make us have to jump over or figure out and I feel like if you're if you're in real estate because you love it because you enjoy helping people find new homes because you're passionate about being successful then you're going to navigate it like you have no choice yeah, you're, yeah. Gonna, you're gonna figure out what's necessary yeah if you're in it where it's like this seems like an easy path it's for me to generate some revenue for myself and to make uh, some yeah. money then you're, you're probably the that business. wasn't a work even <laughs> there, before, well, even before this. That's like, a, but I mean, if yeah. we're being honest, there's a lot of people who came into real estate during COVID or right mm -hmm. after COVID and seen a massive opportunity. And some of those people probably aren't here no more. And some of those people probably are lingering, hoping that they can figure it out and they've made some, some headway. But then now you have this thing come mm -hmm. in it's like i'm back <laughs> you know they just yeah. knocked me back a couple yeah. Yeah. steps so i feel like where you mentally where you are in terms of how you have been approaching real estate in general and it's not just real estate i think this is entrepreneurship this is just like if you're going yeah. to lean into something either you're going to go a hundred percent and all in and we talked about this yeah. last night last a little night, bit, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, if you have one night. foot in and one foot out, then it's going to be tough. Yeah. But you just have to decide, like, do I really want to do this? And if I do, none of this stuff matters. Yeah. Like, if you're all in, it don't matter if it's this, it don't matter if it's COVID, it don't matter what it is, you're going to figure it out. But I'm yeah. going to go, and, and I'm going to... matter your competition. Exactly. Yes, 100%. And, 100%. and that's the thing, like, the competition doesn't matter, but it also goes down to, um, I fully believe that when you're all in and making those sacrifices and hitting those um, forks in the road, as we'll call them, it really depends on who you have in your circle. Yeah, true. Definitely. But look, and I got to add you. this last little part. Oh, this you're backing what, up and everything. This, like, is, this what, is serious. No, this is serious because this, this is what everybody needs to understand. Hopefully you don't stand up. <laughs> Listen, can't. I want to stand Mike up. Don't go. We're not you in our meeting. Can you can literally, stand up. like, you guys have to hear what I'm saying. <laughs> anything that you want to do, you can make it happen. Yeah, like, that's true. You can make anything happen. It's just... How willing are you to actually do what's necessary? That's all it boils down to because you might not, you just might not have it in you to do what's necessary for that thing. And if that's the case, then it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. But if you are willing to take the hits and the lumps that require, that's required for anything that you decide to do, you can make it happen. And just keep going. I have a second thought um, because someone had asked about a new agent if it's going to make it harder for them when they become a new agent. Mm -hmm. I think back to COVID times, think about, you know, how everything changed in the workplace during COVID. Mm -hmm. The people that were already working, like, in those positions, like, oh, now we got new regulations, we got to learn all this stuff. But the new person that came in and those regulations were already put in place, they kind of had an advantage because an advantage. they don't know any other way. Yeah, yeah. And so true. those new agents coming in, you guys don't know any other way. But us agents mm -hmm. that have been in it, we're like, man, this sucks. Yeah. So right. you guys do kind of have an advantage coming into it not knowing any other way. And That's true. And at the end of the day, I feel like if you just focus, I feel like the more you focus on this part, like the less you're going to, like the worse you're going to do. Mm -hmm. I feel like if you just, what what I said earlier, focus on ways to provide provide value in yourself then you'll be okay. But if you sit mm -hmm. here and focus on this change the and this new law and this law, like, <laughs> you're going to get nowhere. Yeah. Like, focus on how you're going to provide value mm -hmm. to your client. I promise you, like, you'll be good. And also, <laughs> like, the people that's not in real estate can care less about what y'all talking about. Like, the, and, and that's really, but like, they, that's they, the buyers and the say, sellers. But you say that until you're about to sell a house yeah. and your money involved. Yeah. That's, and but, that's but when everything changes. But this is the part, changes. though. This is the part. Like, and this is for our team, right? Like, mm. it's, it's a relationship business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a relationship Absolutely. business. And your customer is the person that's not thinking about buying or selling right now. Right? Like, you... 
everybody is laser focused and hyper focused on the person that is getting ready to sell their house or buy their house. But that's the wrong game in my opinion. Like in my opinion, the focus should be on showing people who you are and the value that you bring to the yep. space because now when the person who wasn't thinking about real estate starts to think about real estate, you're the person that they're going to think Didn't about. Didn't you just make a post about this today? Probably. <laughs> what, what is it about, like, what it, it sounds, in, building, what building you know, a community versus building a one community, viral? Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 it is kind it's of similar. It's kind of the same thing. Because, because you're building every, your sphere and your exactly, people. And exactly. Your, I, it's, I, a, it's no different. I have an analogy. It's like... Sports is it a sport? Sports sport. <laughs> I'm so I'm so but happy it, it wasn't his wife. It's, it's a quick dance. analogy. Okay. It's like knowing that you are good enough to start for all 32 NFL teams, you're not going to stop working on your craft as a free agent, right? As a free agent, you're still going to be in the gym. You're going to be working out, you know, running sprints, whatever, because as soon as that opportunity comes or the game changes, Mm. You're going to be ready. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. He's, saying, he's had some better analogies. That was a good one. It was a good one. But he has an like, analogy. Just be ready. I was about to say. Just be ready. I was about to say. Let me summarize. Let me, let me, let me summarize, let me, let me summarize what we were saying. Like, I got Stay ready so you don't have to get ready. There you go. Oh, see? Yeah. That's what happened. Because, yeah. Well, be ready. So, Basically. So we're, we're going to wrap this up. Um, and in the big picture, like... Uh, I'd love to hear even more after this podcast is over what people are thinking because we've listen every single brokerage has put out something mm -hmm. about this and I think there has to be a real conversation to to, okay well she said it but <laughs> what, what, what? it's just true what'd she say <laughs> you knew that was coming what'd she, say? she said to sell their brokerage oh um yeah. On what they're gonna do to okay, so Tyra said be it. the but, best and to get you no, to come. But, she, but there has to so. like, look, there has this to be is the real. I was about to say, Where this, is the, RP, real this real is, is the RPR. Like, yeah. you gotta, this is you a have candid. To. This is a candid conversation, like, and and there has to be. But I, but in the big picture, like you have to surround yourself with people who are going to mentor and we have to talk about this because it has changed the game. There's no doubt about it. Like hands down, game changed. Mm -hmm. We're moving forward. Um, but did you guys know? I'm sorry. I don't <laughs> know. Did you I'm, I'm so happy. You There's guys a, know did that you guys it used to be, it didn't used to be buyer's agents. What was you it? You guys know that, right? No. It was well, listing agents that and you buyers. find a buyer for your house. Yeah, but some states, dual agency is illegal. Oh, I did read that. Yeah. Like, like in um, the 90s, like this didn't cha this I don't change. Know which one it is, but I know Sometime is. in the 90s. The law changed where oh. it was able. To, you were able to have buyer yeah. agents. Yeah. Interesting. So I do think there are some sellers that could give a shit, like less. Like they, they don't yeah, care if they pay a commission. They're like, I just, I just want the convenience. Just sell my house. I don't care what I'm paying. Yeah, there it's are going to ultimately like affect the sellers, though. That's what you people think so? don't. I feel like it. How? How so? Because I feel like you need those buyers agents, but yeah. then you got these listings agents that's like just list, just list. That's that's what we do. We just list, but you need these buyers agents because that's what you depend on to bring you listings. Or you're gonna have to find a buyer for the house, and you're gonna have to do more and work. You don't really want to do that, but you do probably have a showing agent, but you don't have anyone actually being a dedicated buyer's agent. That's true. So buyers are gonna get screwed. Do you really have someone that's <laughs> in your best interest? Yeah. No, you don't. Sometimes you don't. I was gonna say sometimes because you I don't. represented the listing and the in the um, buyer side multiple times, and I honestly can say I've always had both interests in mind. And but what about I say, the listing agent that's listing their family member's house or their best friend's house? <laughs> yeah, because that always, always happens. Like, oh yeah, who does every seller work with? Their family or their friend, typically. Well, I'm that's, that type of person where that's fair. Oh. I'm not. I'm that type we of person where another, like, like right is ball. right and wrong is wrong. I don't care who it is. Like even if it's my family, even if it's my kids, whatever. So, 
in that instance, even if I'm working with a family member, I'm still going to represent, if I'm representing the buyer as well, I'm gonna still represent the buyer to the fullest. That's just me though. Uh, I, I would say I wouldn't. I mean, if my brother was selling a house and I wanted to get him the most know. money, I'm gonna get my brother the most money. Sorry. Well, you're gonna get your brother the most money, but at the same time, you're gonna you but can you still look out for the buyer's yeah. interest. If the buyer really want the house, you're gonna figure out how you're gonna make it work for both of them. But also, you know? it's like you said earlier, how many buyers are you gonna have, or buyer's agent coming in? Again, they may be pipe passing the agent, but how how many people are you gonna have coming in if there's no no room to negotiate or to talk? That may change the game for you as well. Yeah. I but at the end of the saying. day, I've always I totally looked at it get like, what if you have a buyer that want to buy and you have a seller that want to sell, it's got to be some way we can just make this work because they both want yeah. the same thing. So just come to a good common medium. Cheers, Jerry. All thoughts. right. So yeah. this has been interesting, and I think that um, this is going to continue to unravel. So I have a question for everyone. Oh, okay. Let's do it. So, so <laughs> what are, okay, so before we go, we're wrapping this up. Everyone give their thoughts on what are you going to do to get through this change in real estate? Hmm. What's your plan? Your like like in a simple statement. Just keep watching and educating myself and learning. Yeah, I mean, that's all you can do, right? I think Just ne keep nego going. Yeah, negotiation skills are going to be at an all-time high, and you're going to have to learn how to pivot and navigate, and I think there's going to be not the first or last time that we're going to have mm -hmm. to pivot and navigate. Um, but I think I, I kind of agree with you when you said, like, people coming in new to this game, I'm going to have, as a new agent, I'm going to learn skills that maybe someone who's been in the game for 10, 15, 20 years mm -hmm. hasn't had to deal with. Why? Because... It hasn't been that situation. So I'm going to learn new no. stuff. And I think I agree. Like, I'm going to learn how to um, pivot and navigate. Yeah. I, I feel like both, what both of you said, guys said are true. Like, the education piece is going to be very important. Just, like, keep getting knowledge. Keep mm -hmm. figuring out ways, as I said earlier, to, to bring value mm -hmm. to, to your client. Yeah. And yeah. I think as long as you're doing that, you'll be good yeah. or we'll all be good Rob would you like to add yeah. any closing statements I mean again I'm not a real estate agent but <laughs> any comments yeah, any I, comments I mean I like, just feel like I think real when estate when he takes that, that, that I know pause. because <laughs> I gotta make sure I say it in a way that you know I don't rub anybody the wrong way but I just feel like it's the right list, people Everybody, hi I know. <laughs> what are you whispering? Everybody get hyper focused. Yeah. In the real estate world, like your world is so different. Like it you is guys. So different. And when I say it, is it's not the same as when other people say it. Because if you're around real estate agents and brokers and people in your space, then of course, like everybody feels that their space is like whatever it is. The ultimate space. We work in tech, hospitality, fashion. Like all these other spaces, there is no space like real estate. <laughs> like I'm giving you that perspective. It's so competitive. Like it's so competitive. And even with Tyre's comment where it's like, everybody's giving their thoughts to sell their agencies. Like that's an example. It's not like if a broker is talking about their opinions of NAR, their only allegiance is to the people that is a part of their brokerage. Brokerage, yeah. whether they believe that or not, I'm just saying what it sounds like on the outside looking in. Mm -hmm. And in the bigger scheme of things, like that sucks. Yeah, I mean it, it kind of sucks. Like for you know what I'm saying. From like that from so my perspective on the outside looking in, I just I really wish that the brokers and the people who are the leaders in the real estate <laughs> space especially for Michigan, because we all know who they are. I just really wish they embrace who they say they are and really do it for everybody. For the culture. For the culture of real <laughs> estate, exactly. For the culture of real estate and not just necessarily to grow their brand. Yeah. Like that's my two cents. Yeah, I, I agree. agree. I agree. Yeah. We can end it with that. The culture is too competitive though. 
That's all, it's that's so all compelling. But that's one of the reasons we started a like, Circle is to build like a culture. It's like having 32 teams yeah. Yeah. and giving everybody a sauce, but there's only one Super Bowl. Exactly. And that's how we're different yeah. because we don't chase, we attract. We attract. We attract. We're magnets. We <laughs> but but, yeah. but we're the new Detroit Lions. Everybody want to play for our team. <laughs> Except yeah. for Cam Sutton. <laughs> <laughs> the new Detroit Lions. <laughs> have to so end it with the, um, a sports, with the sports analogy. analogy. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, so uh, next week is going to be an interesting week because Will and I will not be here. We will be on vacation. Jealous. Then, I'm so jealous. Listen, yeah. I'm not going to tell I you. I need a vacation so bad. If you got, li- how about we like live stream it and yeah, show you them? Yeah, yeah. 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 you're going to say the- that, but are you really going to no. do it? Probably <laughs> not. They're going to be, <laughs> but. Having fun. But the thought that counts. Yeah. So we may do it. We may like uh, FaceTime you guys next week. But Tony Weaver. Who is one of our partners in Iconic Circle will be filling in mm-hmm. for me. Um, I'm, Did we talk to Tony? Yeah, Tony yeah. is confirmed. Hey. Um, and w- will Norm be in Will's spot? Well, uh, that yeah, might, Norm. Norm, you come Norm, Norm, we need you. Norm, Norm. are you going to be? We need lemon. Norm. Lemon. We need lemon. Some lemonade. lemonade. Lemon. Where you we at? need to know <laughs> if you are going to. We need the to, lemon pepper for next week. Uh, lemon yes. pepper. We need to see if you'll be sitting in Will's spot, but. We might FaceTime you guys. We might pop in and see what you guys are up to. And I mean, you could give us five minutes. Yeah. How about? We'll send you the link. Oh my, with a drink in my hand and a <laughs> yeah. shorts, let's do it. And just to make us <laughs> jealous of anything else. <laughs> I, I'm just going to disregard We should get like a big part. TV screen and like help. I'm going to act like I just did not even Thank hear that you. last <laughs> Thank you. I didn't hear the last part. <laughs> uh, let me tell you I what he said. Like a, he like said with a drink in his hand it. and hoochie daddy shorts on. Oh, the hoochie daddy shorts. <laughs> <laughs> I just heard Gucci something and I Gucci just Gucci daddy shorts <laughs> Will said he been in the gym Those are the shorts that go above your knee <laughs> The Hawaiian silk Absolutely <laughs> Listen, some of the shit he picked up today Like when we uh, went I, uh, yeah Your son is going to be so embarrassed <laughs> Um, not by us. You like it ain't gonna be by us because you listen. We're yeah. Will's like one of like five dads going on this trip. That's it's cool, gonna though. be. It's gonna be quite interesting. That's the best thing about going out of town. No one knows you. There, yeah. So. Yeah, but well, I, I don't do. know. You guys are walk, going with people. I have that, to walk around with him. He yeah. was talking about getting like this pink flower Hawaiian shirt today at like Forever Twenty One, and I looked at him and I'm Forever like, 20? Yes. Hey, look, I love Forever 21. No, they got a men's section. They got a men's section. They got a men's section. And uh, he walked up to me and, like, had this shirt in his hand, and I was like, no. <laughs> Don't do it. Listen, I'm a, we're going to broadcast from the pink party. I Actually, got, got we did. Wait, what? What did you see? Shorts, oh, okay. Hoochie pink Daddy shorts and this pink type shirt. You and these damn Hoochie Daddy shorts. <laughs> we need, okay. hey, look, we need, like, Listen. outfits of the day. Whatever you know the works. TikToks where they, like, clap hands we do. and they different, different We outfits. do. And, and there's there's a jungle party. There's a white party. There is a uh, pink party and a neon party. We so can't we, wait for the pink party. <laughs> <laughs> You just see my outfits. <laughs> <laughs> the only time you be you said it. I don't know. I don't know if there's a party on Wednesday though. There might not. We might not be at a party. We may actually just be sitting in there. But we will pop in. We gonna pop in. Okay. We promise we will pop in. Um, I don't know how it'll be aired, but we promise we will pop in. And They're Tony will be here. In, but go ahead. <laughs> I'm popping in. <laughs> <laughs> Hoochie Daddy we'll Shorts is all we'll about popping yeah, in. We gotta see the Hoochie Daddy Shorts. Sorry. Uh, yeah. It will broadcast that. But uh, I don't think I've ever heard that term. Hoochie you've Daddy. Never what? Heard? Not Hoochie what? Daddy. I've heard Are you Hoochie kidding Mama. Me? But you've never Hoochie. heard of like, Hoochie Daddy Shorts? I wouldn't even know how to imagine what a Hoochie Daddy <laughs> Did you see your brother's <laughs> face? Like he was like. Yeah, I think, it, I think that term kind of popped off in like 2022. Hoochie Daddy? Like a TikTok. Hoochie Daddy. TikTok. TikTok. Oh, yeah. okay. TikTok. Do a TikTok. I don't know if you should TikTok Hoochie. <laughs> don't search I, Hoochie. I'm going to definitely oh, she's gonna um, search, search it out. Hoochie. It's yeah, going to pop Hoochie up Daddy. Hoochie Daddy shorts. Yeah. They're just but, five inch shorts instead of seven. I can five. imagine is what, what it is. I just never, yeah. I Can't never wait. heard the term. I'm so excited. All right, guys. Well, stay <laughs> tuned for next week's yeah. episode. Thank you guys for tuning in. As always, like, comment, and subscribe. And we get, we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye, Bye guys. guys. Have a great one. Roll it, roll it for like five seconds. Do you guys want to stay live on Facebook? Or you we can stay live on Facebook. Like, does any? I've been watching the videos on YouTube. Uh-huh. See, it's like at the go. end when we rap, it just yeah. cuts off. Mm-hmm. But I think that would be good to go like.
at least like five seconds longer when we just like yeah. let our hair down, we like, you know, yeah. take our headphones.